Hey everybody, welcome to the next map that I'm going to play, which is Area 51. Which is again the classic diamond shaped. Ooh, and look at this. Snowy planet? Alright, alright, the map is not too big. You pretty much have a view of each spawn point wherever you spawn, so that means that snipers can already deal huge damage. Now, you cannot really enter the towers, but can you enter this? No. So it seems that all the obstacles are not functional. You can say, well, you can take cover, which you really cannot. Because how the spawn points are set up is that whenever you are, you have always at least one enemy command post in your sight, which means that you are in danger. Here they do have a bunker, which they can protect, which I think you should. I think it actually would even be fun, because this is such a small map you can really, really do a lot of damage from that bunker. See, I can already, from here on out. See, if somebody was in a bunker, I could already deal damage from here, and they could even kill me from all the way over there, so, whoa! It shows you that there's a lot of quick pace action here. Oh, here we go, with, though, with the heroes. And this is, of course, again, where the balancing comes in. I'm again from the opinion that in this map, hero units um, disregard the whole balance. It becomes really unbalanced. It could be a lot of fun, because what you usually have, if you have a diamond-shaped map like this, right? You have an objective in the middle, or somewhere else, where you could actually go to a second level. So you could go up. Um, which I first thought that this was that, but it's not. Which means that you can actually use that kind of like as a strategic point to put your snipers or be with jetpacks in to kind of cover. But I guess with, with jetpacks you can still get over there. But it's not. So it's this kind of lane based combat without any of those higher points. Which you could say, well, that, that means that you cannot get a strategic overhand. But. What it also means, oh my god, damn it, we had it for a moment. What it also means is that um, the balance actually keeps the same the whole time through. The only way the balance can shift is if your team really fucks up by not protecting and attacking well enough and they lose a certain command power so that the other team has three but then again because it's in this diamond shape as you can see they took over that post and we now have that one so the balance is very very well in this map you can see that we are in front but I would say that it's only because I did some major damage with the hero unit and these are just those these smaller maps really do not benefit from the hero units at all. There are other maps that I've done that like this that look a little bit more interesting. But like I said, they usually have some strategic point in the middle or somewhere else that you can uh, conquer or um, position your troops at to kind of get that overhand, but so if you like this style more, it can be your thing. I don't, in all honesty, I do not understand why they have all the buildings. Maybe to put your snipers in there so that I mean, if you would put snipers in that building over there. They could actually protect against hero units quite well, since I, well, 
doesn't take long for me to get there, but at least that gives them time to regroup again at the spawn point. But I guess that is a strategy that you can use by... Wow, th two destroyers? Are you shitting me? But by placing your snipers over there and they can give you cover from a great distance while the attackers cannot, I mean, unless they also use snipers. But see, if you have snipers in that building, they can shoot me pretty well from here, but I can probably not hit them at all. So that's the advantage that you get with that. Which, I am going to actually be a sniper. Mm-hmm. Come on, reload, dude. Number of units is great for the map. Like I said, with the whole strategy of using um, snipers that stay back, is that you gotta have an important decision with your group of how many snipers you will, you know, use to defend and hold back, and how many attackers you have. See, the interesting thing also, if you use snipers and you let them wait in the, in the buildings, is that they cannot compensate for enemy attackers that get into the radius of the command post. So if it already starts ticking down, you don't have any of your own units there, which means that the um, the gauge will decrease very rapidly. Nope. And we are, oh my god. I was about to get a drink, but I can't, apparently. Wow, you, you guys sure are stubborn. I have less than 20, so yeah, we are we are winning this. Just gotta tidy up. Nope! Alright, who got? Two left, huh? Well, probably you're just gonna capture this and then do my uh, end thing. So, yeah. Had a lot of fun in terms of looks. The map is not that special, but as I said, you can have some uh, some fun strategies. But yeah, like I said, it, it doesn't blink out or anything. Probably not gonna play this, you know, a second time. But if you think, well, this is interesting, uh, download link is as always in the description. And I will see you guys next time. Wow! Apparently I do not see you guys next time yet. Are you shitting me? Oh, there they are. Wow, okay, you fucking suck. But see, it's very difficult for me to hit them from the distance if you have snipers. They can kill me very easily. Alright guys, see you guys next time!